In today's episode, we learn how Alex somehow has three days in one and how spending more time away from my desk has actually improved my productivity. If you are watching this on YouTube, we would love if you could go ahead and hit the subscribe button and leave us a comment below. And if you're listening to this on another podcast platform, if you could go ahead and leave us a review as well as share this with a friend you think would enjoy. Thank you guys so much and we'll catch you on the inside. What did you enjoy about your weekend this weekend? It was a, a weekend that was a little bit different. Uh, we have been having a priority of uh, connection and spending time with loved ones and friends. So we had Tiffany and Jonathan, two dear friends of ours, come up from Lexington and Lexington area mm -hmm. and uh, get to spend a couple of days with them and Trip, their son, who is a hoot, one of the <laughs> <laughs> funniest little kids ever. Um, extremely well behaved. Yeah, extremely very well behaved. Well -behaved. What, a, what a fun kid to be around. What a a great kid to be around in general. Um, he did beat me in basketball a number of times. Under um, I mean, he's got some mad hops. So <laughs> what can you ask yeah, for? Yeah, he's, uh, he's mastering the art of jumping right now. <laughs> and he had me run up and down our uh, kitchen because the, the basketball goal was at the end of the hallway. And so he and I would run and I, for whatever reason, I had to slam the basketball first and then he would come behind me and slam a next basketball. Um, but the kicker was, is that one, I had to run and two, I had to make it first. And if I didn't make it, then we had to restart. And when I say we had to restart, we already had about 45 repetitions in. So, and I didn't hit all of them. I missed some, I you know, threw it off the back of the rim or something. So we had to restart at least, you know, 10 or 12 of those. So what a, what a fun experience, but I was exhausted on Sunday. <laughs> uh, keeping up with a little kid like that is a lot of energy. I give all parents a lot of kudos all the time. Anytime we're around any of our friends who are fortunate enough to be parents, I always give them all the praise because it is a full-time gig times a hundred. My favorite was just the fact that he kept asking just for you to play. So it gave the rest of us a chance to sit and just watch you play basketball. But he was very adamant about you having to run. And he also didn't want just him to have a basketball. Even if no one was shooting, he wanted multiple people to have their own basketballs so that we were all involved. And uh, it was great because they pulled up and they didn't even question the fact that we had a little Tykes basketball hoop in our kitchen. Yeah. But uh, it worked out great. So if you have a two and a half year old that you need to run out some energy, little Tykes will be a really <laughs> good like $40 that she'll spend. Yeah. And one thing, shout out to Gus and Tucker, because normally Gus really struggles with any they're in the room right now. Our, <laughs> these are our dogs. And uh, Gus really struggles with B-A-L-Ls being not his and someone else's. He cannot fathom the idea that they're not his. And he has learned very quickly. He was amazing with them. Um, didn't lunge for the B-A-L-L um, and did a great job. So kudos to the to the pups. Yeah, they. I was very impressed because last time we tried to get an inside basketball situation, Gus immediately popped like every single ball because he would just lunge for it and those were not dog toys and he would just absolutely destroy them. And so we made it clear that they weren't his and he did a really incredible job. They both did such a great job with Trip in general. Tucker loves little kids. Tucker loves everyone, let's be honest. Uh, but Gus sometimes can get a little bit territorial, but immediately right off the bat was like ready to give Trip like all the kisses and love. And they both just wanted to be like in his face. And they are definitely like at eye level with him. Um, so Trip was a little overwhelmed having like two dogs that just wanted to be right inside of his face. Yeah, it was a lot. What is today's topic? Today, we are going to be going over some habits that have changed our life. Wow, changed our life. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And when it comes to habits, I wanted to outline why habits or how habits can be so extremely beneficial. So they can provide structure, discipline, and opportunity for self-improvement. They can also create a sense of accomplishment. Habits are also going to reduce stress and anxiety. It's going to increase motivation, minimize decision fatigue, which if you know me, this is absolutely monumental and needed for me, give you a sense of order and purpose, and it's going to 
positively affect other areas of your life, which we're going to dive into more when we talk about our specific five habits and how it has affected different areas or how it's kind of had a domino effect or just kind of a whole life effect um, as we go into things. Now, I know that was a lot of information there, but just being able to talk about the fact that, again, they're going to provide structure. They're going to give you accomplishment. They are also going to provide discipline for you. And just focusing on those main factors here, um, we're going to dive into how they really did change our life. Absolutely. What's the what's the first one for you? I would say daily movement and getting outside daily has been monumental. And being able to use movement in a little bit of a different way than I've used it in the past. So instead of looking at it as kind of like a means to an end of I move to like get this goal physique, or I move and I work out because I want to look this certain way of while that is still a part of it, and it still can be a part of it for anyone listening. I've really looked at movement of how it can enhance my life and add to my life and figuring out what that looked like for me. I think when it comes to building habits, it's really important to look at what your goals are and then being able to kind of work backwards um, and figure out like that reverse engineering of, all right, if this is my goal, what needs to be done in order to accomplish it? And one of my goals was first being able to manage like my stress better, uh, as well as being able to increase my productivity is something that I was very interested in, um, as well as being able to focus on my mental health, because I have realized over the years that walks of always been uh, something for me of just a time to get away from it, a time to have for myself, but also a time to connect with others of being able to use it within our relationship really positively within other friendships as well. And so those were my main goals there. And I knew that being stuck behind my desk all day was not positive for me at all. I felt the effects. And I know there was a lot of other aspects in 2020 as far as like overconsumption of caffeine overworking, not getting enough sleep that all play into like how I felt in 2020. But another thing was that I was literally sitting, we were both sitting in front of our desk all day long. And really the only time I did cardio, and I used to be like a major hater on cardio of like cardio is hardio. Uh, We all hate cardio, you know, all those like shirts that talked about how cardio was the worst. Um, And now I'm out here doing cardio, which it is cardio, but like I'm doing cardio out of choice every single day. And it's not just to burn calories. It's for like my mental health, my productivity, my focus, my connection, um, as well as the benefits of just getting outside. And so implementing that into my life has been huge. And especially in the winter, as I said recently, this wasn't that bad of a winter for Ohio. And I followed it up with outside of those negative 45 days, it really wasn't that bad. But truthfully, I feel like the habits that I instilled during the winter that I had never been as consistent with as I have this winter really moved the needle forward and allowed me to not fall into as much of like the seasonal affective disorder, not to fall into as much of just like meh and like that like overwhelming just grogginess that you feel when the weather is that way all the time and you don't see the sun. Um, I was able to like really show up for my mental health and myself within getting that daily movement and getting outdoors and just making that such a consistent habit. How are you implementing it? How are you working into your day? Yeah, mostly it is a at least a morning walk with the dogs, and that's something that gets the dogs worn out um, to start the day because I swear, even though neither of them have any husky in them, I think they both have some husky in them where they just need intense energy to be run off at all times. I do not know where they get all of the energy that they have, probably from sleeping every second that they're not playing, but it is something that makes me so happy that they get so happy they stick to my side in the mornings because they don't want to possibly miss the walk. And they are just so joyful, which makes me overwhelmingly happy to go on the walks, even when they're being brats and I want to kind of strangle them. Um, But it is something that I get that morning walk in before breakfast. Um, And that's nice because I normally start my day around 5 a.m. And so it gives me um, two or so hours at my desk, two to three hours uh, before I take a break. And that's kind of like my break for the morning. And then I come inside and I make breakfast. We eat together which is another part of like our morning break. Uh, We're breaking the fast and then being able to go into another chunk of work. Uh, But I also have it in place with being able to go on walks in the evening with 
with you or just throughout the day. Um, and whenever I'm at a place where I'm doing work and I just feel like I'm I'm not progressing within my work and I've kind of hit a wall, I start with kind of just getting up from my desk and getting outside. If it's only for 10 minutes, then fine, but seeing kind of where my headspace is at from there because there is a lot of research on just if you take more consistent breaks, you can actually get a lot more done, keep your focus higher, your productivity higher, and just accomplish more, and I'm I'm all for that. Absolutely, yeah. Getting outside has been a big help for me too. Yeah. And do you feel like within our walks, like what have you gleaned from going on those walks? Like what has it been as far as a benefit outside of just getting the movement in? It's been time for us to to communicate. I think it's a good opportunity. I, I prefer to have conversation while we walk rather than sitting in the house or what have you, just with how much time we're already sitting anyway. It's better for us to get outside and get some sunlight and walk. I feel like my, my thoughts flow a little bit more cleanly uh, as I'm walking rather than still just sitting inside. So um, that's probably the thing that I've gained the most from it. Yeah. And I've really liked that we've tried to be creative about getting outside as well of, yes, we have the ability to walk in our neighborhood, which is incredible. But just a few weekends ago, we went over to a dog park. Um, and then another time we went down to Bridge Park and walked around outside and were able to uh, get some movement in, in that way. And so just not sticking or feeling like it has to be all in the same way, um, but being able to kind of find how it fits into our schedule and how we can make, make it add to our life the absolute most. Right. Yeah. So what would you say one of your habits are that you've nailed down that has absolutely changed your life? I would say being specific, being very specific amongst all things. I think that um, this is something where this applies a lot to our conversations, our communication, some of the the times where um, you fall into a situation where it's like, I always do X, I'm always doing Y. And in reality, it's just being specific of, no, I just made that mistake just now. I'm upset because of this singular mistake. I'm not speaking this over myself that I've done this a hundred times. Or if, if I'm asking someone to do something and I have something very specific in my head that I want them to do, but I'm giving giving them a generalization with the hope that they do what's in my head. And that's not fair to the person, nor is it fair to me because I've already put that expectation in my head, and but I have not articulated that to the person. And so being specific in that and giving them exactly what I'm expecting has been a big change for me, um, as well as being specific with the goals that I have for myself, as well as specific for what my day needs to entail. So those things and just being more specific across everything has helped tremendously and working towards not speaking in generalizations has been big. Yeah, I definitely want to give you your flowers on this because I feel like you've improved uh, tenfold on just being able to to speak up, to vocalize things, and to say what's on your mind because you do have such a, a brilliant mind and you do have so much to share and to, to help other people with. And I think that this goes off of us talking about how we've improved with feedback um, from the leadership podcast of you've been able to really uh, take a step up in how you give feedback with that specificity. Yeah, it's a big help. What would you say held you back from making that a habit to begin with? I would say people pleasing, you know, not wanting to hurt anyone's feelings with being more direct. Um, the possibility of what I'm specifically saying being wrong and, you know, running into that situation of, um, potentially not being right is always something that everyone fears. Everyone wants to be right all the time. Um, I, I think that also that it puts you in a position where you have a very specific thing that needs to be done or you're wanting to accomplish and does not leave a whole lot of room for error if you fail or if you fall, you fall short or what have you. And so that is a like something that you have to come to terms with and also being okay with with coming up short or not doing exactly what you said and being able to look at that and say, okay, what can I do differently or what should I do differently to actually specifically do what I said I'm going to do is a much better route. And so I would say those few things really held me back from doing it previously, more of just being self-conscious, I imagine, like a you know aspect of that. 
Mm -hmm. And when it comes to habits, do you feel like habits need to be something that you do every single day or that you're perfect at to say it's a habit that you've kind of gotten consistent or a habit that has changed your life? I would say with habits, it goes back to the rule of don't miss twice. So I think that in a perfect world, all your habits you would just do every day and it, and you know the world is hunky-dory and everything works out perfectly. Uh, but the reality is, is that that's just not life. And so keeping the mentality of don't miss twice, if you miss a habit one day, don't make the same mistake the following day, I think is the best way to go about habit making and habit sustaining as a whole. Yeah, I think it's a, a delicate balance of giving yourself grace in moments when you're trying to figure it out, but also recognize you're trying to hit a standard and an expectation and not giving yourself so much grace that it's just okay that you didn't do good enough because sometimes it's not okay that you didn't do good enough and you have to step up to the plate and get it done even when you don't feel like it or it feels like all the cards are stacked against you because I feel like that's a big part of just getting over like the the bridge of having a habit habit is like pushing yourself to make it happen even when it's so difficult. And I know we'll be talking about some habits that we're in the progress of, but one of those for you being yoga. And there have been a few times where the sessions really haven't been like at a good time for you, the the classes that are signed up for, but you've gone regardless just because you know, hey, even though this isn't the best time and I would I would possibly like to cancel right now, I know that I need to show up just to prove to myself that I can and just to have that confidence and that I'll figure it out down the road of how it needs to truly fit into my schedule. Right. What's number two for you? I would say waking up early slash prioritizing sleep. And the reason I made this little bit of a slash here is because I don't think that everyone needs to wake up early. It's about maximizing and optimizing the amount of time that you have in a day. And so for some people, that might be staying up later. But for us and our schedule, we've noticed over years of kind of taking uh, inventory of how things are going or how we feel based on if we sleep in or get up early or how the flow of our day goes, that waking up early is really beneficial for us. Um, and so talking for myself of just really holding strong, if that's something I want to do and I know it's going to allow my day to be better, of not being swayed by different things and recognizing that if I get to the end of the day and I'm not where I want to be, that part of that well, a lot of it is my responsibility and I have to take ownership that I didn't do what needed to get done that day. And instead of thinking like, oh, I can just stay up late and kind of like get it done and I'm going to miss up on sleep, it's being able to recognize like that was my doing. I now have to, quote, pay for it in the morning and make sure I get my stuff done so that this doesn't happen again. Um, and I think it's just allowed me more clarity and more space for my day of of being able to have that time in the morning because I, I like my day to go a certain way. And I can't sit here and say that I want my day to go a certain way or this works best for my routine and then not prioritize it because then I got no one to be mad at than myself. And so I feel like especially recently of there was a few times that we just were not kind of sticking to our schedule and I had made kind of a declaration to myself of I'm going to do this and I'm going to get back on to my schedule and what's going to work for me. But that goes hand in hand with prioritizing that sleep uh, because it, it's not beneficial to be waking up that early if I never get good sleep. And so being able to really focus on what are the things that are going to improve my sleep. And part of that was being really strict of not having the dogs on the bed, being really consistent with cleaning the sheets and changing our pillowcases, uh, ensuring that we aren't getting into bed and being in a place where we might have a lot of dander or pollen on us or anything to that degree. Uh, as well as setting the temperatures correctly, the fan, all of that jazz. But um, at the end of the day, also ensuring that I cut off work and enough time to truly allow myself time to wind down and get to sleep to make it the most productive sleep that I can make it. So I feel like those two go hand in hand because waking up early for me is the habit that I, I really want to push forward. But I do think that sleep overall is going to enhance so many different people's lives. Absolutely. It's changed my life as well. Yeah. What would you say is number two for you? I would say this is one that I've had my whole life almost subconsciously, but less but better. 
And by explaining that, I mean that with clothes, with things in my life, with um, you know, just whatever it is, I like to have better quality things and less of them. And I, I find that to be a much more enjoyable experience as a whole because, especially with clothes, as we talk about that, clothes being something that maybe what I have is is more expensive, but I have significantly less than I may have had in the past or uh, what have you. Like I, I go through the the same, you know, 14 to 15 tops, if you will, that I consistently wear, but I love every single piece. I love how they fit, all those different aspects. And so focusing more, and this applies to your nutrition, this applies to your your training sessions and those different factors where you're focusing much more on the quality and not just the accumulation of, of crap, right? And so being able to apply that uh, to everything in my life, friendships, relationships as a whole, I think is a, a very valuable habit that I'm just continuously strengthening as I get older and those things. Where do you feel like the turning point was for you to recognize that less was better? To be honest, I think that it was my mom probably where we grew up with not a whole lot. So what we had, we had to take care of. And so no matter if it was the you know, nicest shirt that we had or the cheapest shirt that we had, it was all taken care of the same because it was just a matter of like this is the one thing you're getting. It's not getting replaced. You need to take care of everything that you've got. And so I would say that the mentalities stem from that. Yes, you are definitely one of the only kids that I've heard of, of ironing jeans and t-shirts yeah. uh, as a whole. But yes. <laughs> my mom was very stringent on just how I dressed and presenting myself the best possible all the time. And so, yeah, uh, always everything was steamed. There was never a time that my shirt was wrinkled or anything of that nature. I think one of the best words to just describe you as a whole or like what's important to you is quality. Yes, quality you, in all things. You want quality in every single thing that you do. Yes. You want it in your clothes. You want it in your car. You want it in your experiences. Um, you want it in your friendships. You want it in your nutrition. And it's been something that has been incredible to be around because it's shown me like I, I can want quality too. And that can be the standard that I'm going after. And that also comes down to the habits that make up your life and how you structure those to allow you to go after that quality that you want so much. Right. Yeah. I would, I would much rather wait to have the quality thing than buy a lesser thing to six months later, a year later, get the better quality thing. So I would always just prefer to wait until I have the best. What is number three for you? I would say keeping things tidy. And this is one where I know that this is in the habits that have already changed my life, but I will admit like I'm still working on this one in different areas of my life. And I used to be very much so of the thought of how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I think there's 100% merit, merit in that saying. But I also think that with that, I was causing myself to feel like unless I got everything clean, I couldn't really be a clean person. And being able to kind of drop that from my mind and just focus on let's build that one habit and see how we can stack on it. And it's been really helpful for me of like keeping my closet more organized and more cleaned out. And that's also been with getting rid of clothes mm -hmm. and having better quality things and not just having a lot of things, being able to like keep my vanity space more clean, um, being able to have more organization within just like our house as a whole has been huge for me and just being able to have a clearer mindset. And I know that we also talked about with having our friends in town, uh, they had asked, okay, are there certain chores that each of you do or how is that split up? And we were talking about kind of some of the rules we hold for ourselves uh, for within laundry of if you're going to start laundry, you're going to finish laundry. You're not just going to leave stuff in the dryer because no one likes clothes that have just been left in the dryer. I will say the only exception I'll make to that is towels. And maybe I'm saying that because I recently left towels in the dryer. Who knows? Uh, but we also talked about like within the dishwasher of we don't let sit, um, like plates sit in the sink for longer than a day of if the dishwasher needs to be unloaded, it will be unloaded and it will be reloaded. And there's not going to be this standard of dishes just sitting in the sink. And so it's been really positive to both have each other for accountability, but also to have different things that we're working 
working on within that because we've also talked about it of like if I walk into the bathroom and your vanity is super clean and mine looks like a hurricane just came through, then I'm like, oh my gosh, I got to clean this up because I can't be having Alex out doing me right now. Um, but it's it changed my life within just like that quality aspect comes into place of these are the things that I've spent my money on or spent my time on or whatever it may be. They deserve to be clean and I deserve to live in a house that's clean. Um, and that makes me feel good. And it's something I want to welcome people into our space. But it's also helped me within just being able to have like, again, that that clarity on a day to day of when I walk into a space, I'm not immediately overwhelmed or anxious where I know we've talked about it on the podcast. But if you didn't know, my room used to look like a pigsty of like their pictures. And I can't believe like I posted them on the internet because I'm like so embarrassed looking back of just like my room, like even after college of just clothes all over the floor, the whole floor is covered, everything's everywhere. It makes me like cringe thinking about it now. But it's just like where my headspace was and where my quality of life was at that point. Again, there's multiple things that change, but like me sitting in my own mess was not helping any of the places that I was in within my life. And so I would say like just having those rules for what my base level of like organization and cleanliness and what our our base level is for our home has like completely changed just how I feel in the space that I'm in on a day-to-day basis. I will add for the sink aspect that you have so much more stuff, like in terms of makeup and those different (laughs) factors. And so for me, if if my vanity is like dirty or cluttered at all, that is like unacceptable. Like I have an 18th of the things that you have for you within makeup and skincare and hair products and those different factors. I have two razors or like, you know, a, a trimmer, a like a close shave, and then I have a toothbrush, toothpaste, and face wash stuff. Mm-hmm. that's it. Like I, that's all I've got there. And then I have like colognes, which is its own little area. So there's no reason for my space to be dirty whatsoever. Now for you, I think that you get not necessarily a pass, but a little bit more grace when you're you know, getting all your makeup. And there's a lot of different products out, at least to me, I, I, I know almost nothing about <laughs> makeup. Um, but that being said, I think that just holding it, like having someone that you, that you live with, within your partner, within a roommate, that hold you accountable to being a better version of you is is extremely important because as you said the the competitive nature and just being able to see my space being clean it's like I don't want to be the weakest link here I don't want to be the bottleneck is a huge driver for just continuing to be upholding to one another so I think that that's huge yeah, I a hundred percent. And I do agree. I get a little bit of grace, but just like before I go to bed, like I should put my makeup brushes away and make sure my makeup is put in the sections and like the organization I've gotten for it. And I feel like I have done such a better job of like ensuring that that's done. Even if I don't clean it up the second I'm done doing my makeup, if I'm like going to the next task, I always appreciate grace in that situation. Um, and then being able to get everything from there. If you are a bikini competitor who has competed well at the regional stage or at the national stage and not placed how you wanted, I would love the opportunity to work with you. If you would inquire via the link in the description box, that would be the first step. And from there, we'll get a call scheduled and I look forward to speaking with you. But what's the number three for you? Number three is splitting my day into three rounds. This is a huge win for me because previously I would look at my day as just one day in its entirety. And I could have one or two things not go my way in the morning. And that means that I lost the day type situation to where now I look at it in three separate sections of my day. I have my morning, I have my afternoon, I have my evening. And those different pockets of my day have different tasks that are needing to be done. And there are days where sometimes my morning doesn't go exactly how it was supposed to. And I write an L for that aspect of my day, but then that day's already completed. I move into the afternoon and I can crush that. And then I can crush my evening to where now I look at my day as, ah, I was two out of three. This is nice. But previously I would look at my morning not going well. And that being like, well, my day sucked. I, I only saw what was in front of me. And, and, um, that was a big shift for me to really understand the success of what's possible throughout my day and also kept me much more clear-minded and focused on the task at hand rather than 
letting what transpired previously to just kind of drag on and be more of a nuisance throughout my day. And so uh, if you are someone who struggles with that, I highly recommend going this route of kind of structuring your day differently. I think it's just been incredible for your mindset to be able to give yourself, hey, this is a a day that's going to keep on going or this is the next day and I can move on from this of giving your your brain those segments that are really helpful for you. Yeah. And I think that my my standard is if I can go two out of three, I'm happy. And then overachieving is going three out of three with all the things that I have on my plate. And those happen. I may have, you know, three or four days a week where I go three for three. Um, But I would say four times out of the week, three or four times as well, or I guess two to three times I'm also having where it's like two to three. And I would say I can go a week or two or maybe three where I go only you know one for three. Very, very rarely, if ever, do I go O for three because there are things, especially within my evening and how like the tasks that I put in each within the evening, it's, it's prioritizing being present, spending time with you, spending time with the dogs, getting myself to bed on time, like things that are ingrained in me, but can I can check off my list that are just momentum building and, and positive reinforcement for me that I'm doing things that enhance my life, enhance my day, enhance my health uh, that are, are, are beneficial. Yeah. I think momentum building is so important within like everything you do, if you can use something to your advantage, then then go for it. And I think that being able to have those things that you know you're already going to hit gives you that push to be like, okay, I'm going to get these. Then the rest of it looks a little bit easier. or I feel a little bit better about it. Absolutely. What's number four for you? Before I dive into that, what made you find that breaking up your day into threes was going to be the most helpful for you? I think I heard Ed Milet talk about it maybe a year or so ago. Um, I had heard him and it just resonated with me. I I think that it made sense because of how many things I had going on during the day that just looking at it as one big day didn't make a ton of sense. As after he said it, it made much more sense to break it up and it felt so much more comfortable and less overwhelming and overbearing um, by having specific tasks for just this six hour period and just this six hour period, I have these things to get done rather than I can get kind of, you know, too far down the road of, well, yes, I have to do this right now, but I have so much more on my plate. Like I need to get all these other things done too. And it just made me anxious and overwhelmed. And so it just allowed for me to focus on the task at hand and be more present where my feet were. And so that was the kind of root of it. Yeah. How would you say that you had tried in the past to schedule your day outside of splitting it into three or just looking at it as the whole day? Yeah. Just looking at it as the whole day. I mean, I just went from start to finish and it was all gas, no brakes, and not really having any opportunity to have a, a win outside of having the win at the end of the day. And that was my only time to reflect rather than it being something where now I'm having three reflection points that is super helpful to see all the things that I'm able to get accomplished in one single day. Do you make changes at those reflection points or is it kind of like you go into the locker room, it's just a little refresh and get back out there? Definitely times that I make adjustments for sure. I think that you know, there can be times where I'm not feeling all that great and it only makes sense to back off of the work at hand. We've talked on the podcast before of it being something where I am paid well to do the job that I do and I have a duty to each of my clients to perform at a very high level and provide them with the utmost best service. And there are times where my my mind is just not there. There's things going on in my life. There's things going on. Um, in the, in the world maybe that I just need to take a step away and, and have a day for myself. And so there are times where I have to pivot and um, those reflection points help with that because I think that prior to having those reflection times, I was just like push through, push through, push through. It doesn't matter. You still need to go. You still need to do these things. These are all, all the things that you have on your plate. And I wasn't spending any time reflecting or being present where my feet are. I was worrying about the things that were coming up in the future. And so um, that's a big help. Yeah, I would say that you've like it's been incredible to see your improvement when it comes to just listening to yourself and and knowing when to have that push and pull. Mm-hmm. So going into number four for me would be uh, planning my days out, which kind of sounds like a, a no dip uh, habit that you should have in place. But, you know, it, it wasn't something that I was doing. I was kind of going into each day free balling it just 
what's the day going to throw at me now? And while I would have things as far as scheduling things on my calendar, I wasn't very proactive about what that looked like, whether that be knowing what was going to be best for my schedule. So I got into a really bad habit of scheduling meetings at like 9, 9.30 a.m. And that really threw off my cadence where, yes, a lot of times we were finished with breakfast and I was, quote, free to get into a meeting. But as far as just how my morning had gone, um, like, and then giving myself time to get back to my computer, it wasn't very conducive for me. And so being able to recognize from pre-planning my days and taking time to reflect of, hey, I, I really shouldn't have meetings until like 11 or noon, because that's how I'm going to be able to show up as my best self. Uh, but it also has helped within being able to know how much I can fit in a day and what it looks like when I sometimes overbook my days. And that's always great for me to see that. And then to say, hey, I, I really can't have this many many meetings in one day, um, or I can't have this many appointments of leaving the house if they're all in the same day, and being able to really structure out my days so that I can win each day or each section of the day uh, as a whole. And so looking at when I end the day before of like finishing up what else is on my to-do list or making notes of what I need to know for the morning, as well as looking ahead to the next day, seeing what the schedule is to see if there's something I need to be aware of how I need to change, whether when I get ready or I need to make sure that I'm on a walk by a certain time so that I'm able to get to something that might be scheduled. Um, all of that has been enormously helpful for me in just being able to show up better at work, show up better personally, and have a lot less like stress and anxiety going into each day of like it doesn't have to feel like kind of the Sunday scaries going into each day. You get to have some control over that and how you set yourself up. And a lot of it was me not wanting to put everything on paper because it just felt overwhelming. But it was actually a whole a whole lot more overwhelming to not put it down and to not track it and to not plan. Right. I think that putting in the extra work is something that people just want to avoid. And it's more comfortable just to honestly, it, it's so interesting because it, it seems more comfortable just to have the anxiety. It feel, it seems more comfortable until you alleviate it, right? Until you go and do the extra work that it feels more comfortable to have the anxiety and, and have the worry. Whereas it literally is just going to take you, how much time do you think it takes to set up your day the day before or whenever you schedule your day? In like 10, 10, 15 minutes maybe. And it, it really can be like closer to that 10 or less depending on what I've done to set myself up going into that next day. So it can be even simpler um, just depending on what that pre-planning looks like for the week, for the month, um, and then going into each day. Yeah, it's powerful for sure. Yeah. Do you feel like planning your days um, have been a, a helpful thing for you or just being able to, to have that pre-planning? Yes, that was actually one of mine as well, is um, having that in place as well as tracking my, my work hours. Um, with my work hours being something that previously I attached with a lot of my work being a client work and it being check-in based and those different factors, I used to attach a specific number of check-ins that I needed to get done per day so that I stayed on task with things. And with the greater complexity to my work as I've grown as a coach, the the duration of, of time that I've been working, um, clients having blood panels, clients having more specific exercise execution stuff, and, and the um, data that's being collected just getting more and more vast within their check-ins, it became something that I could no longer track just the number of, of individuals that I was speaking with on a day-to-day -day basis as my, okay, I did this correctly today. And I needed to move to an hourly base of, I know this is how many hours I can commit to this type of work today. And I'm just going to work as hard as I can and as focused as I can within these hours to allow for me to have the best quality of work, no matter, you know, sometimes I can get a greater quantity done in an hour and sometimes it's significantly less because of the complexity of whatever that case is that day. And so making that shift for me was really helpful because previously I would beat myself up so much for not getting to the threshold or the standard that I put for myself within that number allotment. And once I realized of like, dude, this is not 
always the same. The, the, the difference in these check-ins can, can vary quite drastically depending on what the situation is and what that client is needing. And so it's not really fair to me to put just a, a number allotment on it because it's going to be vastly different. And so when I made that change, that was big. And then just tracking all of my work task as a whole, understanding what I can commit each day is tremendously helpful uh, so that I can better structure my day and not put unrealistic expectations on myself to get a, a task done that is not really within my realm of possibility of I really have the bandwidth to provide with whatever that task is. Yeah. And I think it's just given you so much more peace of mind. And you've used the phrase of reminding yourself, I'm getting paid to do quality work, not fast work. And I love when you say that out loud, because it's it's a good reminder, I think, for people to hear of, yes, time does matter yeah, as a whole, course. but your quality matters yeah. vastly. And as we've already stated, like quality matters to both of us. And we want quality not only in what we have, but what we give. And I would much rather give a quality response than a fast response and just be able to get back to someone. And I think that that's helped just your your headspace going into those check-ins of knowing you're giving each client like what they deserve and the best quality of work that you can give them. I, I stick to this statement that they're like, I, I've been this way for years now of, yes, I have a window of time that I will get back to every check-in 24 to 36 hours. It's always been that way. But there are times where I may fall outside of that. And I have never, not never, or I mean, at least in this last two years of what I can remember, I've not had a client complain because they're, they know that they're always going to get the quality and what they are paying for, even if it is a little delayed type situation. And so I think that the only time that individuals complain in that setting is that if it's redundant, like you're consistently late, that's not, that's not what I'm speaking about. This could be once every quarter, once, twice a year type situation at most. And I think that that is something that I, maybe some coaches who are listening are like, oh my gosh, my, my clients are going to be so aggravated with me. I have to rush through this and get back to them because it's 22 hours. And, and I've said I'd get back with them within 24. Like I have to rush, 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 rush. It's like, no, no, no. Now your client's going to be double pissed because now you're late, but also you gave them just this half-assed response because you were just trying to rush through so you could stick to this timer. It's like, bro, give people what they're paying for. Give people your entire effort on everything that you're providing them from a service perspective, and that's how you're going to retain clients. That's how you're going to earn the trust from all the, the individuals that you're wanting to work with. That's how this works, and um, it's one of those things that I, I could go on and on about. Oh, I, I love when you uh, go on, and I love that you're passionate about it because it is just so true of – you you want to do quality work and you want people to have a quality experience. And it's not just about like getting something out. It's about truly giving them that service. And that's what the standard is for all of us at Physique Development. And that's helped us have the quality of coaching that we do and being able to have the impact that we have. And it started from the top, which is you. If you're the person who's been doing this the longest and that's the standard you repetitively set for yourself and you expect out of others others, which just makes people step up to the challenge, step up to the plate and be able to really provide that service. Absolutely. What's your, uh, what's your last one here? What's number last five? Last one of habits that have changed my life is skincare. Okay. And when I talk about skincare, I'm not just talking about my face. I'm talking about all the skin on my body. I used to not be good at this at all. Of I've always struggled with acne um, all growing up. I went on birth control for a little bit for it. Um, I've struggled with just like having breakouts and just not having the skin quality that I want. And I had a break through uh, two years ago, I believe, where I was just like, how can I expect quality skin when I'm really not putting in the work to get that? It was something that I'd seen so many other people just have nice skin without trying that hard. And I kind of was up in arms about why, why don't I have nice skin? But like recognizing that life isn't fair. And sometimes you just have to work harder for what you want, um, or you have to put in more effort than someone else to get the same result. Like once I had that click inside 
my head and figure out like how I was going to go about it, then I feel like just everything's improved within how I'm able to present myself. And it's not just about having clear skin, although that is something that I do love and bring so much confidence into my life, but it's being able to have skin that I feel good in. And that starts with taking care of the skin. And so instead of having like crusty elbows of like, I'm very consistent with lotion. I'm very consistent with like having an, uh, like exfoliating my body um, like every few weeks and making sure that I'm taking care of my skin. I'm very consistent with taking the makeup off my face, with washing my skin, with serums, with lotions. And it's just been able to improve like my confidence as well as just me feeling more comfortable within how I feel and look and how I present myself um, and just like the comfort in my own body of knowing that like, hey, my my elbows and my skin is soft. And of course, all the compliments from you of always talking about how soft my skin is makes me feel really good. Um, but it gives me like that sense of accomplishment and just knowing like I'm taking care of myself. And if I'm someone that's going to sit here and preach health and being able to take care of yourself in a multitude of different ways, I need to be able to take care of myself and I need to be able to walk the walk. And so that was something that has changed my life within how I show up for myself as well as just like showing to myself of sometimes just putting in a little bit of extra effort is going to breed the result that you're you're really wanting there. Absolutely. I think that you've done an excellent job with your skincare. You've motivated me uh, to do a better job of washing my face and, and those different factors. I would say I motivated you to do more body lotion yes. as a whole. I would, yeah, I'll take credit for that one. Yes. Um, that and the most perfect lotion in the whole entire world, the Vaseline lotion. Yeah, it's a it's a sp very specific one though. It's like a- Intensive repair or intensive something. Intensive repair. It's it's a white bottle with a blue lid. Um, it's nothing you know fancy necessarily, mm -hmm. but it is probably the best in terms of absorption and actually making a difference within the quality of your skin. Yeah. So shout out, more more free shout outs shout from out. the Physique Development Podcast. Um, but yeah, skincare is a huge one. And I think that like a lot of these things that we're talking about are the investment and, and people ask about building self-confidence and are seeking to build self-confidence. I think that a lot of self-confidence just comes from the disciplinary acts that you continue to stick with every single day. That is how you develop it. It's not going to be like, all right, today I'm going to be self-confident. It's like, no, I. it took me a year, two years, three years that I just continued to just hit the rock and keep getting after it with all the disciplinary acts within my fitness, within my nutrition, within how I take care of my skin, how I dress myself and all these different things that bring self-confidence to the to the forefront and put it at such a, a place where it's just overflowing. You get into a room and everyone knows. It's just an aura that you carry with yourself because of the work that you just continually to put into yourself. It's not coming from a place of vain or anything of that nature. You're literally just doing this because you know that it's going to be the best version of you. Yeah, you're keeping the promises you made to yourself, and that is 100% going to help in your self-trust and self-confidence um, as a whole. And exactly what you said, it's not just about like what you look like or being vain, but it's being able to recognize that you're taking action on the things that matter to you. Because we've talked about it before, but a lot of our anxiety came from lack of action, lack of doing anything about it. And all of these habits for us originally likely started as far as why we wanted to change or why we wanted to build that habit was due to the fact that we weren't taking action on something before. And that was causing us anxiety and causing us to not be the person that we wanted to be or not live the life that we wanted to live. And by like seeing, okay, what are my goals and what do I want to accomplish with this? And then keeping up with that is, is only going to breed more confidence of knowing like, I, I can do this. I did do this. And I feel good about the fact that I showed up and I'm going to keep showing up. Absolutely. So what is number five for you? Number five is probably the one that I have the most seasonal aspect to. I do a really good job of this at times and I can suck shit at times too. <laughs> and that is controlling my social media consumption. There is nothing that makes me want to whoop my own ass more than just mindlessly getting on my phone to scroll social. And one of the things when I'm doing excellent with this is that I ask myself before I get on any of the apps, what are you getting on here for? 
why are you, what is the point of you getting on here? Do you have a direct reason as to why you're getting on here to either consume or connect? Is there a direct thing that comes to mind that you have a mission to be on here for? If you don't, which is more often than not, like I, I'm, I'm sure those listening are like, damn, yeah, I do that way too often. It's one of my most annoying pet peeves of myself. I'm with you. I'm so with you. I hate it. It is so annoying to me. And I, can like when my anxiety is bad, when my overwhelm is bad, when I'm feeling just kind of like trying to escape, the easiest thing for me is just to pick up my phone and scroll Twitter. And then I'm like, okay, well, and I'm tired of Twitter. I'll just flip over to TikTok. And it's like, oh, I do TikTok for a little bit. Now I'm going to go over to Instagram. And it's just like this very vicious cycle of like mindless consumption that's just draining dopamine as well as draining my bandwidth as a whole and my mental clarity sinks and all those different factors. There's such a noticeable difference when I do not touch my phone or any social medias by noon. And I, I can get so much done from the time that I wake up at 5 a.m. to noon. I have a meal in there with you, but I'm able to do a copious amount of things when, I'm, when I stick to that. And I'm the best version of myself in those scenarios when I actually do that. And it's such a power, like a powerful thing for me to keep that in mind. And I, when I have seasons of it, I'm doing so good. And I'm like, I'm thriving. And then when things like, lately has been hard. Lately, we've had a lot of hard in our life um, with with your your dad's cancer diagnosis being very difficult. The things that we're going through from a a, a personal standpoint within physique development and, and those different aspects um, to have the situation that I will just put into to context of like people that I viewed as family to my face saying that they no longer believe in me. What it has been a very hard pill to swallow and has really affected me mentally and the the dog in me, the 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 individual in me who is like I I love this, but right now it's hard. It has been challenged and so with this anxiety and some of these things happening in our life right now, I've had just, you know, I've had to really be challenged in this specific thing. It's very difficult. Um, and I, 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 f I feel so weird talking about it because it seems so easy to control. It seems like something that I should just be able to snap my fingers and stop. But it is, I don't know, it, it's one of, those, one of those troubled things. So habit-wise, when I'm doing good with it, I'm crushing it. And I encourage you um, as the listener, if you feel the same way to... Just ask yourself that question. Get on there. If you're about to get on there, why are you doing that? Why are you getting on there? What's the point of you being on there? What's the goal? How long do you think the goal is going to take you? And then pop on there, do your thing, and get off there. Um, so that was a little bit more emotional than I thought it needed to be, but or mm -hmm. I thought it was going to be mm -hmm. when I got into the dialogue. But yeah. I like you just let it flow. But within uh, you saying like it seems so easy, there, there's obviously a reason it's not and it's designed to not be. Yeah. Like it's literally designed to keep us engaged and to keep us on the app. And we've seen within the data on the apps that a lot of like what um, like drives down engagement or doesn't help you is when you're not staying on the app because that's what they want you to do. And so I, I agree that if we really zoom back, it looks like like, oh, I should just be able to stop using this. But there's a whole psychological effect to that of like what social media is that plays into it. Um, but I also wanted to ask what that app is that you use for social media, because that could be really helpful. Oh, I use Opal. It's a it's a paid app. So I've tried a handful of different ones and, and the the question prompt comes from a, a one that I believe is free, but it was way too many hoops to jump through. Opal is is much more direct. It keeps you locked out type situation. So I have specific time frames in my day that um are my you know, specific apps are closed. And so that app helps tremendously. Yeah, because I like you just said it keeps you locked up because you were saying that the notifications that come up just they they don't keep you locked out. Yeah, you can like just the, say ignore and I'm going to get in. Right. Like you have the, lim the limitation things just on your iPhone. But with that, you can just, you know, press remind me later or whatever. So with Opal, it's like you have no option, but it's closed out and you just have to, 
you know, get off there. Yeah. And I think that's powerful of you knowing yourself well enough to say, hey, these aren't working for me. And even though you were using them of saying, I I'm going to get around them. So what's one way that I can show up and being able to find that app, I think was really helpful. 100%. Are you wanting to hire the last coach you will ever need? Well, look no further. Physique Development is here to help you. We have a huge emphasis on knowledge and communication and making sure you know how to get yourself in the best position so you never have to hire another coach again. If this sounds great to you, then go ahead and fill out the inquiry link in the show notes or the description box, and we would love to get on a call with you. Yeah. So I also wanted to go into some of the habits that we're currently working on just because we're ever evolving human beings. And it's all about being able to keep stacking on habits. I think when it comes to habits, it is realizing that you are starting in one place, but you can always build on that habit. So these aren't all necessarily building off of the past habits that we've had, but being able to talk about things that we're actively working on to be able to improve right now. Absolutely. So what do you got? Uh, for myself, it is time management and delegating at the top of the list. And I know I just talked about one of the habits I feel like I've gotten into a really great place with is planning or pre-planning my day. But the time management aspect is a whole other one that I feel like still needs to be locked down. But I'm very much so working on it of where I fall into is kind of time blindness or just thinking that I'm going to be able to accomplish a lot more in a time frame than I actually can. And Alex has been extremely helpful of just being able to kind of bring me back down to earth sometimes of when I say like, I'm going to get this, this, and this done in a day of him being like, you you're not going to get that done. That's literally impossible. Uh, but being able to push the limit is helpful for me to like see how far I can go or how much I can get done. But I have really been working and kind of made a, a proclamation for myself of that this year is the year that I like master time management and I get into a good place with that. And that comes into play with delegating because I need to figure out what tasks I shouldn't be doing to be able to maximize my time and see where I might be, quote, wasting time on things that really aren't necessary for me to do and might be impeding my ability to have good time management because there's just too much on my plate that I, I don't need to be doing. Absolutely. I would say that you are well on your way to improving time management. Tremendous. I mean, I over the last five years, there's been quite the <laughs> transformation from when we when we first met, um, or yeah, I guess past that now, that's wild. Um, but quite the transformation. You're, you. you're on your way for sure. Um, the ones that I am actively working on at this moment are going to be more physically, um, more physical than anything. I am working on yoga, which is super fun. I love it. It is a blast. I really enjoy the aspect of not being good at it, which I, I really enjoy the difficulty. I enjoy probably being the worst person in the class. I like the aspect that I am putting everyone on notice in the class who's actively better than me, that you wait six months and I'm gonna be whooping your ass in every pose that we've got here. And I wholeheartedly believe that and am going to, I, I really, like, I think that a lot of the teachers in there so far have honestly thought I was in there probably for a bet. <laughs> that I was in there because you drugged me there or something, which you haven't gone with me for most of my sessions. And I, I just, I think that a lot of them take it as like, this guy's out of place and he's just, you know, it's going to fizzle out. We don't need to really pay attention to him a whole lot. And I think that they're quickly catching on, like I'm here to stay and I'm going to be very good at this. And I'm going to shock a lot of you on how good I can be at this. And I like that. That's like being able to prove kind of the narrative wrong, if you will, at least the narrative that I'm creating in my head. And that's part of the game for me um, and, and doing that. And then also getting back into running. Running is something just from an athletic standpoint that I was obviously very accustomed to playing sports growing up. Our baseball program in high school and a little bit in college, honestly, was very centered around distance running. I think that that, I don't know if that's still kind of like the ideology from a baseball standpoint to have the quantity of distance running that we did, um, because I don't think that it was overly beneficial for the for the sport in and of itself, but that's a conversation for another day. Anyway, spent a lot of time running then. Now, 
I was probably at that time 170 to 180 pounds. I'm 215 pounds now, 10 years later. And it is something that I'm having to slowly get back into because my body, my hips, my just my knees, my ankles is just not accustomed to distance running with this amount of body mass. Shocker. I know it's crazy how I just can't pick things right back up. After and be exactly, 10 years of not doing it either. I, I know. I, I cannot believe it. I'm still in shock <laughs> and um, I'm figuring that out as I go. But running is something that I, I enjoy. It's another one of those situations where it's just hard. It, it, it's hard from start to finish and you're able to push yourself and you're able to like the, the post aspect of it all is, is very gratifying in those different factors. So those are the two things I have made a, um, uh, a commitment to Miguel. And I may say it on the podcast at some point of, I'm going to run a specific race <laughs> and with him and I'm, I'm putting him, he's not even here today. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm putting him in the, in the equation as well. And, uh, cause he's, he's already good at running. Yeah. He would whoop my ass right now. Bad. I mean, bad. Um, but I hope to run a specific race with him at some point this year. A perfect case scenario would have to be in the summer here, or at least in the fall, I suppose. Um, but if I'm if I'm diligent and consistent, I think I can make it happen. And what's the um, driving force of you nailing down those goals? What was the purpose of you getting into those? I think I just love being competitive. I love the competitive nature with myself more than anything. Training serves that, but I was, it, it's not that I'm getting tired of it or anything of that nature. I think that it's something that I needed to be a, a real novice in and allow for myself to learn and see maybe a little bit more of, of drastic improvements per se, because it is tough as you, as you get deeper and deeper into your lifting career, the, the, the changes in strength and the changes in, in body composition are just very minutely gradual. And you just got to be the patience aspect just continues to get stronger and stronger throughout it. And so having these other athletic or, or, or physical things uh, to chase, I think is just a, a fun way for me to put myself in a position where it's something that I enjoy. Like you put anything in front of me and it's competitive, like I'm going to have fun. I'm going to find my way to gamify it to my best ability. Um, and so that would be the main reason why. And I think that it's just an opportunity for me to potentially meet new people here. Um, being as competitive as I am, it's an easy way for me to be engaged. And then also meeting people along the way uh, is a, a good opportunity because while we've been here, you know, for the last year, we've been training at home, working from home, not being out of the house a whole lot. And having that human connection is a big part. I guess one thing that I would also add to my uh, habits that I'm working to improve upon is just getting out of the house once a day, whether that be just going to a coffee shop for a short period of time um, or getting out and going to a yoga class or whatever it is, just getting out of the house and going somewhere and doing something um, is something that I'm working on because there can be periods of time that I am here at the house for three or four days in a row without leaving. Um, and that has worn on me for sure. That is one of the things that drastically affects my mental health um, that I have to be mindful of in those different aspects. So, Yeah. Uh, with yoga, that's something that I know I have tried to convince you to go to in the past. What do you feel like now has really changed that um, of being like, oh, I actually want to get into this? I want to do it. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm I fair. I just, I genuinely, I think it's helpful to know that sometimes different habits come into your life, but it's not the right time to to necessarily pick them up. Yeah, I think that I am, we've talked about this on the podcast a number of times of just, I don't bend a whole lot to peer pressure. People wanting me to do something and I don't want to do something, very unlikely that I'm going to do it. But if I want to do it, I'm definitely doing it. And so that's one of those, it's just one of those things that I've known the the benefit to it as a whole. And I have seen the benefit for other individuals. Um, but I don't know if I felt as committed. Like yesterday was, yesterday was my sixth class in the last three weeks. And um, 
it was the first class that I was like, oh my gosh, I've gotten, I've gotten better. Like this didn't suck as bad. I didn't, I was able to, to balance better. I was able to get into poses. I was able to recognize what different pose name were without having to look my head up when I'm in a downward dog, like trying to watch the instructor while I'm also trying to do the next pose. Um, so that was uplifting for sure. It was like the first day that I saw true progression, um, within my abilities in that. And so, yeah. Yeah, I love that. And I, I love that you're someone who just does what you want to do. And I think an important clarification of that is it's not always that you're doing every single task that you want to do, because there's things that we both do on a day to day basis that it's not like, oh, I can't wait to do this task. But you're doing what you want to do in regards to what you want to happen in your life or what your end goal is. So let's take something like meal prep of I might not enjoy doing the meal prep, but I want the end goal or I want the outcome. And so that's me doing what I want to do is following what that outcome is going to be, regardless of if the task is as enjoyable to me. Right. Um, another thing that I am personally working on right now is going to be people pleasing and boundary setting, which I am I'm on the up and up with that one as well. It's a it's something that I I am balancing like what that grace and what that improvement is, as well as figuring out how it it works for me because it is something newer to me, so to speak. And with that comes like troubleshooting of how I want to show up and what those boundaries do look like for me. Um, and it, it's difficult because it's something I haven't doubled down on in the past. And so like coming into like what feels aligned with me, um, it, it doesn't feel as aligned because it feels uncomfortable, but it's like pushing through that discomfort and leaning into that discomfort to really see like what's on the other side of that and how my quality of life can improve because a big goal of why I'm I'm working on people pleasing and boundary setting is that I was recognizing I wasn't happy in my own life and it was because I was spending so much of it wanting other people to be pleased or just wanting to please other people and I'll always be someone who wants to make other people happy in regards of like I love showing up for people that I love and I I love caring for people, but I'm recognizing there's a difference between caring for people and then like letting it rule your life in the way that you aren't able to live to your fullest potential or you aren't able to do what's going to allow you to have success. And so uh, just being able to recognize that there is an end goal for this and it's something that's for a greater quality of life, a better life for myself is really encouraging. So through the the hard of like not making everyone happy or not pleasing everyone, I, I know that there's a lot more happiness for me to be had. I love that. It's going to be a, a, a journey. There's been, you know, some tears already. And, and I, you know, it's something that is ingrained in you as a whole, and it's going to take time and it's going to take uh, a lot of just uncomfortable moments for you in general, but I've already seen the benefit of just you being happier and you being more confident in you rather than just simply like seeking someone else to be happy. And prioritizing your happiness has been one of the more special things that I've gotten to watch you do over these past you know couple of months, last year or so. And I'm excited to continue to see it because it's just bringing out a better and better version of you as you continue down this journey. Yeah, I think just reminding myself that like at the end of the day, you have to look out for yourself yeah. because who else is going to? And not in a pessimistic way of like everyone's out to get you, no one cares about you, but everyone should be focused on themselves to a certain degree and being able to look at what they want to accomplish, how they want their life to go, the person they want to be, all of that, and be able to work towards that goal. And me being in a place that I am constantly just wanting to please others, again, left me so, so empty of no one looking out for me and so it's it's entering into a place where I'm having to be selfish in a different way than I've ever been. Um, but for the the end cause of having a life that I can be more selfless comfortably than being it in a way that I am like um, having resentment for that. Right. It's a balance. Yeah. 
Uh, and the last one that I have for myself is going to be posture and core engagement, which, you know, it's a it's a work in progress, just like these other ones. Uh, and that has been with just what before I start my training session of taking some time to breathe and to get into a neutral core and to work on some hinging or some pressing or whatever that uh, session is calling for, but starting with that core engagement and getting connected to my breath, as well as just being sure that throughout the day that I'm having kind of a touch point on my uh, my posture or my core engagement, um, or even like when I'm going on walks of making sure that I'm breathing through my nose and being able to keep a consistent breath in and out through my nose. Excellent. Yeah. What's the last one on there for you? I don't have any other ones. You don't have any other ones? I, not, uh, not that I wrote down or that I have in mind. All right. Well, that's fair enough. Um, so if you were to tell anyone, like, not necessarily what habits that they should have, but really what you find the benefit of setting these habits or having habits that you're working towards, what would you say that that's, that is? I would say habits provide discipline, and discipline is going to equal freedom and enjoyment of life, in my opinion. And so the understanding that it only makes sense to set the habits that are necessary for you to have the most success and discipline in your day. And so that would be what I would tell them. I love that. Nice and simple and very true. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I would say that uh, just being able to recognize that once habits are established, that they they are using a different part of your brain and they are going to be much easier to just feel like you're on autopilot. And so even though it might feel hard to start a habit of starting more simple, starting at the core of a habit and being able to stack on top of that and build it up and not being discouraged by the fact of you not getting it perfect the first time as we mentioned with the habits that we're working on, there's there's things that are um, like hurdles in our way. And there's things that could easily cause us to step away from it and like lean out of that discomfort. But we're pushing ourselves into it because we want that outcome. We want that goal to happen. And we understand that that discipline is going to bring us freedom um, in the, the long run. And I'm working for a life that is going to build a future for myself instead of just enjoyment in the present where I still have enjoyment in the present, but being able to really recognize that it's about setting it for yourself and making that commitment to work towards it every single day. Um, and it will breed fruitful measures. Absolutely. I love that. Well, awesome. Thank you guys for joining us today talking about habits. If you have habits that you feel like you've really locked down or habits that have changed your life, we would love to hear from you. So if you are watching on YouTube, you can go ahead and leave a comment down below of what that habit is and how it's changed your life. Um, or if you are listening to this on another platform, then we'll have a Google form and we would still love to hear from you um, and also be able to hear about possibly if one of the habits that we have or the ones that we're working on or ones that you have or are working on. So um, if you are listening, we'd love if you could share this with a friend um, and we'll catch you in the next one.